Kerry here. I'm just introducing you to Alice, which is our second van that we built, and it's a 2013 Mercedes Sprinter uh, long wheelbase. So come check it out, guys. Hey guys, I'm Chris. This is our very first Mercedes Sprinter van. This is Alice. We built this in 2020 with the intention of living in Alice full time. So it was built not just as a camper van, but as a home. And we lived in Alice for just under a whole year and pretty much throughout most of coronavirus or 2020 here in Australia. We lived in it, we traveled in it, and she served as a beautiful home. So for Alice, being a full-time living, off-grid, all-electric van home, um, batteries and st electricity storage was really, really important. So obviously with gas, we could have saved a huge amount of money on it, but we didn't want gas. So up top, we've got 800 watts of solar. They're Renergy solar panels. For our battery bank, we have three Renergy 170 amp hour 12 volt batteries. So it's a 12 volt system and a total of 510 amp hours as well. So it's mostly Renergy with 3000 watt inverter, 60 amp um, solar charger, and then we've also got a 40 amp DC to DC charger. With the Mercedes Sprinters, you don't really want to be tapping into too much of their power. So Mercedes factory recommends about 40 amps as a maximum power draw. If you do have the up, up, upgraded uh, alternator, you can increase that obviously, but for your stock build, you don't want to go past 40 amps. We have the air conditioner as well, and that goes directly off the batteries. So not having to turn the inverter on for absolutely everything is where you also save a lot of power. With some inverters, you're saving up to 15% of your power just by running directly off the batteries. Uh, in winter, that's the main thing. And when it came to the solar panels, what I would do differently in future is have it so you can actuate it on an angle. Here in Southern Australia, in winter, the sun doesn't get on enough of an angle to get all your solar panels properly exposed. Fortunately, because I do have a roof mounted air conditioner, I did already have some solar panels that were on a tilt. But that's one thing we are gonna change in the next van. Alrighty, so this is the brains of our setup, Alice. Um, it's not the neatest job ever, it was sort of done towards the end of the build, <laughs> but here we've got the RV Wi-Fi 4GX and our Wi-Fi network, and there's also an externally mounted antenna. So we've got Wi-Fi pretty much for about 50 meters around the van. So you can sit outside by the chairs, you've still got full Wi-Fi. Now it's not connected at the moment, but we do have Google Home as well. And that's connected to all of the lights, the hot water system, and basically controls Alice with just the sound of your voice. It's really awesome. And it also, you can set alarms, you can ask questions. These guys are awesome. So I highly recommend Google Home for control. Obviously we've got our tank gauge, hot water system, and then just a general control panel to control all the lights, the water pressure, inverter switch, and a Victron energy um, battery monitor. bathroom um, it's pretty tiny little cubicle but um, we opted for a little corner shower where we see a lot of rectangular showers just because when you come in it gives you that nice walkway space um, we also went with a slide shower door and it just locks really easily and it's self-cleaning as well inside we've got a nature's head toilet um, so with the two separate compartments, one for number twos, one for number ones, just so you don't have to worry about any chemicals and it all breaks down a few peat blocks and that's it. Inside we've got a shower, 
nice water saving head and despite being water saving it actually is a nice pressurized shower so you don't even feel like you're taking a different shower it's it's just like yours at home with maybe a little bit less water um and that's pretty much it the toilet's ventilated um you can pop a toilet roll holder in here and then you've got a beautiful view straight out the front door um if you want a bit more privacy you can even shut the door with your nice little artwork and um look at your view through the window so you got options it's the best toilet we've ever had All right, now, because we built this as a full-time home, we wanted some of the comforts of home. So we didn't want to have to have showers outdoors, um, out the rear. Definitely didn't want cold showers in the middle of winter. So for our hot water system, we've got an electric system. You have to remember, Alice, we wanted no gas. So everything in here is electric, except for the diesel heater, which taps directly into the vehicle's diesel tank. Um, we wanted the least amount of things that we had to think about filling up or renewing. So for our hot water system, we have a Duetto. This runs on both 240 volt and 12 volts. I can highly recommend these guys. So shout out to AusJ here in Australia that make the Duetto. Um, so these will run directly off the 12 volt battery. But if you want a slightly faster heat up time, you can also run it off 240 volt. There's 10 liters and with our water saving shower head, it lasts plenty long enough. Um, so you can easily get a five minute shower in with this running at full time. And it can heat up to 70 degrees, which is more than hot enough. Now we've also got our pump system. It's not the neatest um, design, but we've got our pump, which is a sure flow 12 volt. We've got an accumulator, highly recommend. You need to have an accumulator. We've also got our filter and a separate filter tap as well, just so that we don't have to worry too much about what's going in the water tank, but also you just don't have any of those tastes or the chlorine -y tastes or the water tank. Um, it's just nice to drink filtered water in a van. And obviously there is a cupboard door which goes straight on here with the bin, but it's much easier to film without it. So in our kitchen, when we're designing the layout of the van, because it's a long wheelbase, we had the option of choosing more kitchen space or more bedroom space. And after a very short discussion, we both unanimously decided it's the kitchen. So that's why our bed sleeps east to west, not north to south. So with all this kitchen space, A, we've got so much bench space to use. Fruit bowl, knife block, tap and filter tap for fresh drinking water. Then we've got these beautiful slide out drawers, which are really efficient storage because it means you can actually get to the back of your drawer without having to dig through. So that's why we used a lot of drawers, even got a nice little skinny one for your sauces. And then up top here, we've got this big storage. So all your dry goods easily fit up there, paper towel, things like that. Now, when we were building Alice, we wanted to base the build on a few different principles maximum practicality, functionality, and just pure ease of living. We wanted it to be as simple as living in a house. We didn't want child locks or straps because that's a nightmare. To have to go and lock every drawer individually when you leave or whenever you're trying to just get some cutlery, have to mess around with a child lock. It's just a pain in the neck. And it's one of those things that when you're living long term, that's gonna get to you. That's gonna bother you over the long run. So one thing that we came up with, and we haven't really seen this done much, electromagnets. These things have been a blessing in disguise. They're absolutely fantastic. They're not the cheapest solution, but they're also by far not the most expensive. So these are attached to every single drawer and cupboard in Alice. When you're parked up and you've got them switched off, it means that your drawers, the soft clothes, everything function as normal. You don't have to muck around with any latches or anything like that. But when we want to drive, departing is as simple as flicking one switch, bam, they're locked. And these have a 60 kilogram pull strength. There is nothing that is going to open these drawers, not without me flicking that switch. I have tried to dodge kangaroos in the middle of the night, done a big swerve, these drawers are tight. The other good thing is it's theft prevention. These are very difficult to open so it feels like it's mechanically locked from the inside 
which is great because if someone breaks into the van, they're not going to figure out how to disengage these electromagnets. So one of the best features we have in the van that we loved was this couch. And we made sure we got a proper foam because we didn't want something that was going to sink after a year or two. We want it to last. So we can sit right here. You can even lounge right back, have like a sunbed and just look out the front door with its beach, mountains, anything. And then as in a van, everything has to be multifunctional. So right underneath the, the couch, we've got a fridge and this one's a CFX 75 from Dometic. So it's more properly insulated than an average fridge. So it's made for traveling. It's made for the bumps in the road and you've got the fridge in first compartment and a freezer and either of those you can switch to freeze or fridge mode. So you've got plenty of options. You can even switch the lids around so they open at the front door. Um, and that's just on a slide. So if someone is working on their laptop here, you don't even have to kick them off. They can just keep going and you can cook in the kitchen at the same time. So that's one of the best features we love. So welcome to our bedroom. Um, as with any bedroom, you want some relief from the heat in summer, especially in Australia. And that's why we installed this air conditioner, the Dometic RTX 2000. It can run on as little as 385 watts or as much as a thousand watts if you've got it on boost. We rarely ever put it on boost. Eco mode, which is the minimal, is more than enough because when you're sitting under here, you feel like you're in a fridge. It works very efficiently. Um, not only that, we've got some window covers as well, and these are magnetic. So at night, we just put them up, and you'd have perfectly dark bedroom space here. And then in the morning, just pull them off. And they insulate as well, so you don't notice any cold or heat coming in when you've got them up. And I just made these myself because I couldn't find anything sort of for the price range um, that we wanted. So that was a DIY project, well worth doing by the way. We've got a little fan in the back here and on a hot night when you just, the air con's a bit much and you just want a cool breeze, the fan works perfectly. We've also got a remote here for the max fan in the front. So you don't even have to get up to operate the max fan in the back. It's all right there for you. And then light switches up the top. So you just jump into bed, turn the light off, don't have to get out of bed. Thanks for tuning into a van tour with Alice today. If you want more of that content, there is plenty more to come because this behind us is our brand new sprinter van, Lucy. And she's amazing. We've just gotten her from all the way from in Germany. And here's Chris to tell you a bit more about her. So Lucy is a 2021 Mercedes Sprinter. She's an extra long wheelbase, unlike Alice, which means we can finally fit a full size queen side bed I can basically stretch out and my feet aren't going to be touching the walls. We have learned a hell of a lot of information and all new techniques from our last two van builds, both the Toyota Hiace as well as Alice. We are going to be building Lucy as the ultimate camper van. We're going to be adding a lot of different innovation, a lot of new ideas and concepts that haven't yet been seen in the van life community. So if you have liked our previous van tour, we are going to be building an all new van build series with Lucy. So make sure you stay tuned, hit that subscribe button and follow our latest van build.